Hi, my name is Larry Newman. I'm a DWI defense attorney. I'm located in Ithaca, New York. 95% of my practice is DWI defense. I do DWI defense from Broome County up to Seneca County, over to Steuben County, and then over to Cortland County. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about the different types of DWI cases. The problem when I talk to a lot of people when they discuss their DWI cases, they don't have anything to really compare it to. Uh, I deal with a spectrum of cases. I like to talk about it from like the good, the bad, and the ugly, or there's the black, black cases, and there's the white, white cases. And then there's all these shades of gray of types of DWI cases in between. And what am I really talking about here? When you're looking at your case, you really can't talk to somebody with a DWI that had a DWI in California or Pennsylvania. In, in fact, you can't even talk to someone that had DWI in Brooklyn, New York versus Tompkins County. Each county is different. Each court is a little bit different. How they handle the DWI case in each area of the state, just like each area of the country, is a little bit different. There's policies but there's also different judges, more conservative judges, more liberal types of judges. How the prosecutors within the different courts handle the cases is also a factor. But above and beyond all of that, I deal in the facts of the case, the proof of the case, what the evidence is in that case. People talk to me about innocence and guilt, but a true defense attorney is going to tell you it's not so much about innocence or proof. It's what could be legally proven in a court of law. The truth is, is that we deal in levels of legal guilt or legal innocence and not innocence or guilt. So when we're looking at the case, I like to look at each DWI case and look at the case as you'd look at a table with four table legs. Uh, it's just a very easy way to look at it. One table leg will be the driving. Was the driving good? In other words, was the stop of the car for an equipment violation? The lights too bright, broken headlight, uh, inspection expired, or was it just because it was speeding? Still, we don't have drunk driving. Or was there driving that was all over the road next level up of getting towards the black side? Or do we have driving where we have people hitting into things? Do we have a car that is not only hitting things but not stopping after it hits things? Do we have a car accident where there's personal injuries, next level? Or of course, if there's a car accident and somebody has been seriously injured, highest level. So we look at the first table leg is the driving of the car. What type of driving do we have? Do we have a drunk driving case with no drunk driving? Second table leg that I look at, did the person that was arrested, did they make any statements to the police? I'm talking about statements that were made at the scene that admit guilt or admit large consumption of alcohol or are basically, you got me. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been out tonight, I shouldn't have been driving. I've heard it all in my practice. But what admissions do I have by the person that is now charged with a crime? Third table leg. What is the mental and physical state of the person after they were stopped by the police officers and they had contact? Were they able to get out their license, registration, insurance? Did they understand the police officer that was talking to them? Did they follow all the commands and directions? Were they able to understand the questions? Were they able to give responses? Were they able to give answers that were appropriate? In other words, what I'm really looking for is, do we have mental coherency? Second part of that third table leg is, what kind of physical behavior was displayed. When the car door was open, did the person fall out onto the street and roll around? Were they able to even get out of the car? Were they able to walk as a normal person walks? I'm not even getting into at this point whether somebody was able to do any of those field side sobriety exercises. I'm just talking about were they able to do what normal people do on a day-to-day -day basis? Walk, 
talk and follow directions and instructions. Because the primary thing that a police officer or an investigator is looking at is, is somebody able to understand mental and physical things at the same time? They call them divided attention tests, a mental task and a physical task, because that's what driving really involves, mental tasks and physical tasks together. Fourth table leg is if they took a test, and I'm talking about a test back at the station or back at the trooper's barracks, if they gave a breath sample, what was the number for that breath sample? What was the breath, or what they call a blood alcohol concentration, a BAC, based upon a measurement of breath alcohol, what was the BAC result in this case? Was it a lower breath result? Was it the middle breath result? Or was it a very high breath result here? And does the breath result match up with the rest of the case or the rest of the behavior? So when we're looking at a DWI case, we're looking at a spectrum. And that's why when somebody does a lot of DWI cases, they're able to take a case and put it in the spectrum of the white towards the black or what level of gray that it really is to see what the strengths and weaknesses of defenses in that case are. Now, in later videos, I'll talk about the refusal case versus the what I call the per se case or the breath alcohol case or the blood alcohol case. Thank you. Have a great day. Now, you can call me anytime, 607-229-5184. Or you can go to my website. My main website is IthacaDWI.com, I-T-H-A-C-A-D-W-I.com. I'd be more than happy to take a look at your case and your situation and see if I can help you. Have a great day.